What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Man Made of Thoughts. My name is Quartes, and uh, I'm back with another synopsis slash comic review slash whatever else that I can think of to call a slash. But anyway, this is excellence. It is uh, written by Brandon Thomas and drawn by Carrie Randolph. They actually like share writing duties on this, and uh, Carrie Randolph actually draws it. Carrie Randolph, as you might know, I believe he designed the characters for Avatar. Unless I'm mixing up my carries. But, um, I believe that he designed the characters for Avatar. Um, somebody, uh, check me, fact check me on that if he did not. But I believe that, like, Aang and all that stuff was in, like, his, uh, his art books that he was selling about around, like, 2007, 2008. But anyway, you know, this is excellent. This is for people who are like, man, all you do is talk about Spider-Man and and, 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 com and, and and all the other comic books. What about something for us? Okay, well, here's black people and a black story that, you know, is, I mean, this story is, is black. Like, there's no doubt about it. This story is about black experience and it's veiled. It's everybody's going to take this story in a different way and that's good because that's what art is supposed to do it's supposed to make everybody who sees it feel something different um and i won't lie to you man i had to read this thing like five six seven eight nine times to figure out exactly what's going on and uh this is more than just like a passion project. These guys actually care about what they're doing and how the series goes because I'm, I'm up to date with this thing. But uh, how this thing goes is that it just keeps like it, the art and everything keeps on going better. But you see that like there's rage. There's rage in the main character uh, right here. His name is Spencer Dales. Um, he has so much anger and rage just because of like circumstances in his life that he was not able to control you know like i said no no make no mistake about this that if you want to call it an sjw book it is but it actually makes sense in the context of the world nobody is just suddenly figuring out that they're racist or they have privilege or anything like that so I believe just some guy says, get rid of your bugaboos. There are no bugaboos in this story. Everything just comes off as natural. So we start off, we have actual rules to this world. Like, these are the rules. Basically, this story is about magicians. They're magic. They have to protect white people. That's, hey, I'm not making this up. That's just how the story is. And they have these rules. Like, number one, protection and defense of the underserving is not allowed. Number two. The creation of a magician's wand without permission is not allowed. Number three, the casting of spells without an approved wand is not allowed. And four, the use of magic by females is not allowed. Okay, so basically now that we got that out of the way, females are not allowed to use magic in this world. They just are not. That's just a thing in this world. But as you'll come to find, if you take out the, the various visual cues in this book, there are women levitating. They're doing other stuff. They're moving things with their minds. They just can't do it overtly. So they can do it covertly, just not overtly. They're just not allowed to practice magic, but they do pass their magic genes on with the fathers to their children. So we open up with the birth of Spencer. Um, he's in one of the most talented and um, popular bloodlines, the Dales. They are really high up there. Like they're, they're up there, like the House of Dales. I believe they are uh, purple as far as that's where they're at. And um, yeah, we get, we get actually like we talk, we get him from his birth. Everybody's celebrating and rejoicing. Um, what's his name? The dad's name. We'll just call him Mr. Dales. Uh, Raymond. Yep, yeah, there he is. He's Raymond Dales. He's very happy because he has a son. That means that he's going to be able to pass on his bloodlines because he has worked hard to get his family's name up to where it actually is. And um, it, there's a proud name behind it. That's why a lot of, you know, black men, we generally like, we want to have sons so we can pass our name down, especially if we've worked hard, we've done good stuff in the community. You feel like Okay, well, you know, you got a son now, you can actually retire and you can go free. Unfortunately, Spencer is not 
very gifted at magic. It takes him a very long time and it actually drives a wedge between him and his father. His father ends up taking on another kid named Aaron as his protege because of the fact that Aaron is better and more talented at magic, which, you know, uh, Spencer actually grows up watching. Like, we go through from age seven to age eight to age nine while he's watching his dad give Aaron the props that he feels that he deserves because this is his dad. So all he just does is get more and more and more angry, just progressively angry, till he actually unleashes one day. Very good art style, very, very good. Like I said, the Dale's house is up there. And then you got like the number one family is the Jackson family, but the Dales, they're up there as far as magic use and uh, being just gifted, like naturally gifted with this stuff. So we come here, and um, so Mr. Dales, Raymond, he's talking to uh, Aaron. Aaron is actually the character that I relate to the most in this whole story. Once you get to other issues, you'll see why. But um, he's saying, no, he's behind. So how you want his handle, Brother Dales? We easing him in? You better than me than, than that, Aaron. So... Basically, they have to break him in and the only way because they're like he's not progressing fast enough He only knows like basic spells like like maybe levitation or like pick something up and put it down So they're just like, okay Well, then we're just gonna beat the magic into him until he learns to like fight back or unleash it So they're beating him through all the ages like age 11 age 12 age 13 age 14 and most of this story takes place when he's actually 15 years old so at 14, he finally decides, okay, I've had enough. I'm going to have to fight back now. So he starts learning things that they really haven't taught him just on rage and fists alone. Like he's got hands and he's got his wand. And anyway, his grandma is actually a central figure in his life. Uh, a lot of people's grandmas are a central figure. But his grandma, is, you know, she gives, them, um, she gives them good lineups and everything. But... If we notice here, she is actually levitating. Now, we've already established that women do not get to use magic in this world, but she knows about magic. She knows how it flows, and she knows about the Raymond, I mean, the uh, Dale's name. But, um, you know, him and his grandma, they share a lot of things. It's almost like she's his mom, and, uh, you know, she cares about him more than his dad, but... She's trying to tell him, look, because the whole thing of this is he's got to go to the Aegis so he can go through his trial so he can become a full on uh, magic user and everything. So he goes to school. He's got the security guard in there and the security guard has a magic wand, too. And, uh, you know, he's like, today's the big day, right? Maybe not too good to get too far ahead. You know, man, don't even worry about that. You're going to make it through. And then he's telling them, man, that lineup that you got, man, that's sick, man. Whoever did it, man, they weren't playing no games on your headline. You like, whew. But uh, anyway, so he goes through. It's the initiation, and uh, his dad is on the panel. And uh, they have to, like I said, they beat them into this world, and they go into it. And it's like a, it's like a, a hollow dimension. Like they, whatever happens to them doesn't really happen. It, it happens, but it doesn't happen. Like, it's like a pocket space of dimension where they interact with things and um, the collateral damage doesn't really actually happen because they weren't really there. But he's being tested and everything. They're beating the dog crap out of him. He's doing these spells and all this stuff. He's very gifted with it because of his rage. And anyway, his charge, the, the charge is actually like the white dude. He's trying to propose to his... Uh, his girlfriend, the goal is to get him to actually do it. So we don't know that, but what we do know is that, you know, he needs to protect this charge. So what happens is he does something that's not really authorized. He puts his wand down and uses a, uh, a ground spell that ends up making the guy save his girlfriend because if he saves the girl, then she'll like think he's more brave and manly and agree to him asking her to marry him, which is actually an ingenious plan. But anyway... We come back, he passed the test, even though it was unorthodox, he still passed. And uh, we finally get a bonding moment between father and son, only to find out that his grandma is in the hospital and they think it's an accident, but we find out later that it might not have been, there might be some tomfoolery. 
and we get some character drama because um, there's some stuff that uh, magicians aren't allowed to do, like healing people, bringing them back from the dead, all that stuff. He's like, look, we can break into the ages, go and steal a spell tome, a healing book, and bring her back because you're not supposed to be using it on the underserved. The underserved is, you know, pretty much your own people. <laughs> so um, you are not allowed to use magic on them. So he's like, look, well, all we need to do, me and you, we can sneak past security. We can get these spell wands, these, these, these books, everything. We can bring her back. And he's like, no, we will do no such thing. And why? Because we find out that his dad's actually afraid of the Aegis and his standing in society is pretty much will be challenged if... Um, if he does that, because they are literally, they're the ninth house. They're very up there. So if he does something like that, he could lose all of his like privilege and his prestige up there. But overall, good issue. Very good art. It only gets better as it goes. This is under the, Sky Brown, the Skybound imprint, which is Robert Kirkman's uh, imprint. And um, it's a good start to a good series. It only gets better as it goes. Um, issue two deals with even more stuff. Like, even though it's a black book written by black people, they wrote their characters in a way where anybody can relate to them. Like I said, I didn't even like Aaron in this first issue. But as, as the issues went on, I, I realized that, like, Aaron is just a cool dude who just happens to, you know, be into this thing. He, there was nothing he really did. It was the fact, well, I'm not going to spoil it. But anyway... <laughs> The story is good. Go buy it if your comic book shop can get it. Go get it from them. Good book. Good start. Y'all wanted black people to have black excellence, then guess what? You got black people writing the book. You got black people drawing the book. You got black people in the book. What can you say? There's no excuse for you to not go buy this book. And it's $3.99. It's 4 bucks, but you're actually supporting something original and very good. So, uh... Yeah, if you like this video, like, share, comment, subscribe, leave me something there down below, even if you hate it, but guess what? It's a good book. I mean, check it out. Just check it out. Anyway, uh, if you would please, if you can subscribe, that would be nice. If you are already subscribed, then go ahead and hit the little bell icon and... Uh, It'll get you kind of informed on any time I upload a, ve uh, a video, not a vehicle. And uh, it would be one video a day. That way we can get something squared away. I was trying to stick with that YouTube algorithm, but I risk being irrelevant. So, can't do it. Just me. But anyway, uh, this is Quartez, and um, I will see y'all later. Peace out.